we have uh, groups open support for women, we have uh, a group that is called W20, we have uh, uh, Labour 20, we have Civil 20. So these engagement groups are very important groups. Uh, they deliberate on very important matters and they, on, and they also come up with their declarations and communities uh, towards the end of their meetings and all of this will feed into the leader summit. With that, I would like to thank the administrators for uh, providing us this opportunity to have this interaction. Thank you. Thank you. Director Sawa, Mr. President Mr. Sir, I would like to request that the meeting of the briefs and the donuts are with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kotar. Good evening, friends. As has already been mentioned, the uh, outline and the structure of the engagement group. So I would like to add a few things here. This is uh, the engagement groups are more of people to people participation. So keeping that philosophy in mind, we give a platform where we invite young leaders, the people who are interested in the themes, thematic area that have been chosen for the Y20. So we have more than 100 delegates who are coming to this pre-summit. This pre-summit is a part of the engagement group process this year during India's presidency in which we have already had one inception meeting in Guwahati in the month of February. Now we have this pre-summit meeting where all the five thematic areas will be discussed by the delegates. Then we have the final summit, Y20 summit, which would be there in the month of August in Varanasi. So besides that, we also uh, have ensured, I would like to share a few things that the ministry has done for making the outreach as much as possible of the Y20 engagement. So we have requested all the state governments who are conducting events in their in their territories, in their areas, in all the schools and the colleges. Besides that, we have also partnered with 14 main universities of the country where we have organized by 20 consultations in which the international students have participated, various international speakers have also participated. Besides that, the White Entry Secretariat that is the main secretariat for the Y20 engagement group in India. They have also conducted a lot of Jan Bhagi events, wherein we have extended the reach of the Y20 engagement. So in this three days program in Leh, on 26th, we have excursion, where, as Sir mentioned, we will take the delegates to the monasteries and to other places like Sanskar confluence and Patar Sahib Gurdwara so that they can appreciate the local culture, local places. Then on 27th we have an inaugural function where the Honorable LG will preside over the function and the students who were part of the run of activities in Ladakh, they will be felicitated. Then on 28th, so after that, uh, on 27th, we will start the technical uh, programs, which are negotiations. So they are in-house technical negotiation between the delegates. And in the, after that, on 28th, once the uh, negotiations are complete, then we have a U.S. Samvad, and that is the youth dialogue with youth minister where the Honorable Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports they will interact with the delegates. Here we will have local delegates also from Ladakh who have been selected during the run of the work process. So that is the broad outline of the three days activity. Besides that, I would like to mention one thing that one of the themes for Y20 this year is health, well-being and sports agenda for youth. So we want to highlight the progress made by our country in this field, especially the non-traditional uh, 
uh, that uh, I would like to category mention the yoga that we progress that we have made, made various therapies. So we have uh, invited a panel of Young Scientists Association of India. So they will curate a program after the inaugural session of 27th. So the theme would be the health well-being in sports, the Indian perspective. So that is all from my side. And now I request my colleague uh, from Inyas, he would like to mention more details about the theme that we want to project. What is the program So you at least where you will be. Yes, sir. Ladakh, UT Administration, and uh, the Autonomous Development Council. I certainly take pride, a lot of pride in hosting the Y23 Summit event in uh, today. And uh, the administration and uh, various parts of the administration, various departments of the administration have already been, uh, since the last three months, uh, preparing and overseeing how we can make this program uh, this important engagement group meeting, uh, which is part of the G20, a grand success in day. Uh, various run-up activities have been held, apart from the uh, regular, uh, regular, uh, you know, face lifting and all those. Things, but various run-up activities in the, especially with the higher education department and the school education department, have been, uh, is the, uh, have been organized. Uh, in a continuum. Uh, they have been uh, in the schools and colleges, especially in the colleges and the institutes of technical education, sustainable campus channel challenge, uh, focusing on environment, focusing on climate change and such emerging issues have uh, taken uh, place and they have culminated in, uh, you know, the, the coppers in these challenges and we will see these uh, young uh, people being felicitated in the inaugural ceremony. The department have been organizing various events, various mock events of the G20, uh, uh, various uh, quiz programs, uh, debates and seminars on emerging issues. About 80 uh, higher higher secondary schools have been involved in sports events specifically dedicated to the G20 and Y20. So these run-up events, run-up activities and Janhagidari activities have been continuing and happening. In the for the G20 Y20 program. Uh, apart from that, during the program, we also foresee that there would be, uh, you know, uh, uh, exposure to our people and also the international delegates who have come to see and experience Ladakhi culture, Ladakhi heritage. Uh, the first taste uh, was given during the morning reception when the uh, delegates came. To the Kushak Batula in Koche Airport. There was grand reception uh, given out to them. Uh, dances and songs and Ladakhi traditional welcome was accorded to them, and then they went to the hotels and they were again accorded uh, grand reception in Ladakhi culture, Ladakhi style. And uh, like uh, we are, uh, you know, Ladakh is progressing with the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of a carbon neutral uh, Ladakh, and uh, the G20 delegates have dedicatedly been given the services of the electric buses and electric cars. So they are all moving in electric buses and electric cars, which are the upcoming public uh, transportation system of Ladakh. So uh, that, is, that is how the Ladakh administration is also portraying where Ladakh is heading. Uh, similarly, entrepreneurship is another area which is very important to the youth of Ladakh. And we have organized uh, Ladakh Heart, where all young entrepreneurs from various sectors, specifically focusing on the one district, one products uh, of Ladakh, like the Pashmina, which is uh, considered to be world's first, uh, uh, world's best Pashmina, which is produced in Ladakh. So we have entrepreneurs of Pashmina who are showcasing their products, their weaving techniques, and all those things. Then we have other audio, audio products of Ladakh, like the Sibakhorn, like the Apricot the food processing industry and the emerging entrepreneurs who are going to showcase their products in this Ladakh heart. So, which is going to happen and uh, been inaugurated by the Honorable <coughs> Governor. And uh, so, these are ways in which 
youth will also take part or engage in this Y23 summit event. Uh, the Honorable Junior Minister is also scheduled to come here on the 28th and also have some interaction with the uh, youth of Ladakh. So this is how we have uh, you know, prepared for the event. And the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh is constantly you know, overseeing the arrangements and is keen that every aspect of the Y20 summit is, goes on smoothly and is a grand success. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Ministry of Youth Affairs for conducting uh, these events under Y20 D20 umbrella. Uh, my name is Rajinder Dhaka. I am currently Associate Professor at IIT Delhi in Physics Department. And I am here not because of IIT Delhi, I am here uh, because of a young scientist academy called Indian National Young Academy of Science <coughs> called INIAS. This was founded in 2014. Uh, I am currently chairing INIAS. Uh, INIAS, I am sure most of you have not heard. Uh, let me briefly tell you about INIAS. INIAS is a group of 100 plus young independent researchers from all over India, from all over institutes, and from all over science, technology, engineering branches. We work together for the growth of, for the development of science and technology in India. And as we all know that science and technology is playing a very important role for the economic growth. And we are in this academy, part of this academy only for five years. So after five years we become alumni. So we induct every year roughly 20, 25 new members and around the same number become alumni. So this academy will be always a group, will be a group of young scientists. So we are young scientists and we are working for developing science and technology. So we are basically contributing in the developments of science and technology and in youth. Uh, under the theme of Y20, we, uh, of course, as I said, we are 100 plus uh, young scientists and we are working in different areas. So in fact, under the Y20 umbrella, we recently conducted one session in Bhubaneswar on empowering young scientists in governance. Uh, under the Y20 umbrella in Ladakh, uh, day after tomorrow, as Pankaji said, we are conducting one session on health, well-being and sports. So as you know, our lifestyle is becoming uh, more and more easy, fast, and we are not really getting time for our health or regular checkups. We are not taking care of health. So uh, we are actually developing, many of our young scientists are developing many cost-effective devices. We will be discussing about those. And we are actually providing those devices to common public. Uh, they can even have the device at their home and can check regularly their health parameters and keep record on. And therefore, they can monitor their health and be in the well-being. You know, we also conduct many events. In fact, for this year, Science Day theme was Global Science for Global Wellbeing. So the development, the contribution of science and technology in health and well-being, we are, uh, many of us are working in those areas and contributing, and we'll be discussing many details in day after tomorrow's session. We also realize, you know, this year, International Year of Millets, uh, and there are many advantages of uh, millets we, we will be discussing. We'll be also discussing about mental health these days, you know, particularly in youngsters, in youth. Being in IIT, we are dealing with young students and the level of stress that they are undergoing due to, of course, various reasons, our curriculum, our pressure on youth and so on. We'll be discussing those, how to, uh, you know, solve or how to deal with that mental stress and uh, then, you know, come up with some solutions and uh, therefore, the mental health is also very important and so, of course the sports that we try to engage all youth. So all these details we are going to discuss in depth for tomorrow's session. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste, Julie, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, myself, Alex Sijaria, I'm head of the Indian Y20 delegation and head of delegate affairs for the U20 secretary. We are really proud to be having our pre-summit in Lake and all the delegates are really charged up. 
Again, I'd like to reiterate what our seniors and mentors at the G20 Secretariat and the Line Ministry have said, that what we are seeing right here is a phenomenal participation. We've got over 100 delegates from 30 plus countries. Now the significance of it can be seen from the fact that this is one of the most inclusive and diverse U20 meetings in the history of Y20. Being part of the Y20 OCs and the culture that has been continuing for the past 10 to 12 years. <coughs> I can guarantee you all that this is for the very first time that we are seeing such an enormous amount of participation, which was not seen earlier, even in main summit. So this is in the pre-summit we have received this participation. And why it is significant and how it goes into the broader paradigm of what India is trying to do is that we have got all the G we've got G20 countries on board. We have got uh, the guest countries on board and also the invited organizations to come. Which means that countries which were hitherto not invited or not part of the U20 meetings are now being represented. And the outcome that would come out of U20 would be very significant. Now when we talk about U20 and its significance among the broader engagement groups, we can realize from the fact that U20 is one engagement group which lies at the intersection of most of the other engagement groups and society paradigms. Because youth in itself is a segment that is part of the other engagement groups. So when we talk about women, there is there are youth. Uh, when we talk about scientists, there are young scientists. When you talk about businesses, startups, in every sense, youth is a stakeholder. And that is why when we even look at the themes that have been chosen, that would be deliberated now over the next five days, they are all encompassing and broadly touch on most of the agendas that India's G20 presidency is trying to take forward. We'll take an example, when we talk about the theme of climate change and disaster risk reduction, making sustainability a way of life, we talk about the very significance of our future in terms of climate action. But climate action, not just in terms of what you're demanding and requesting the governments, but also in terms of what the youth in itself can contribute. We talk about mission life, which has been taken on. So broadly, what we'll be having over the next uh, three days, as Pankaj sir also said, is parallel negotiation on each of these five tracks, where the delegates from all the countries would be discussing, dis uh, deliberating, and trying to build a consensus over what exactly is the youth voice. Thank you. Because the voice of the youth needs to be considered on global platforms and needs to be accounted for in policy making. What interestingly U20 has also done is not just restrict itself to India, but try to communicate and collaborate with other youth engagement platforms across the globe and become the collective voice of the global youth. Because India's G20 presidency, what we are trying to achieve is becoming a bridge between the global north and the global south. And with the U20 Free Summit, we have been able to have participation from all the different segments and try to fulfill that agenda. In that sense, we feel that U20 Free Summit is going to be a major success and in fact with the participation it already is. We are also grateful to the lay administration for the wonderful welcome that was given to us. All the delegates from all the countries are really, really charged up and uh, if we are to share the reviews of some of the delegates, they are saying that they haven't seen something as grand, eloquent and beautiful as the welcome that was accorded to them, the accommodation, the facilities and everything that has been provided. So, what we can surely say is that when these delegates go back, they would be talking about India, they would be discussing, and U20 in itself would be a major agenda setter. Thank you.